All right, today on this 2014 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 Crew Cab, we're going to install part number 8339-4456. This is a fold-down gooseneck trailer hitch. To start off our install, we'll go ahead and get the truck ready. To do that, we're going to go ahead and remove the heat shield for the spare tire. Now, a spare tire shield is easy, just two bolts to remove and set to the side. Then we'll go ahead and lower our exhaust. To do that, we'll use a strap at the very end of the tip to help support it while we go ahead and take off the rubber hangers. To remove the rubber hangers, we'll spray them down with some lubricant, and then pry them off using a pry bar. To give us extra leverage, we're going to be using a block of wood as well. We'll work our way up to the first junction that we can unbolt, and then we'll just go ahead and loosen up the nuts. It's a good idea to spray them down with some lubricant, and then we'll go ahead and back off the nuts as far as that can go. Then we'll go to the back of the end of our exhaust, and using the strap, we'll go ahead and use it to lower our exhaust in a controlled manner. All right, next thing we need to work on is the heat shield. Now the heat shield section above the axle, we're going to have to cut out to make room for our hitch. Now to do that, you can use a set of tin snips. However, if you can, use a cutting wheel to make the majority of your cut, and then finish off with the tin snips. We'll go ahead and move that section out of the way. That's our major cut for now. If we need to, we'll go ahead and trim back the heat shield more as needed later on. Last thing we need to do to get the truck ready for the hitch is make one more notch on the sheet metal that's just above the bed to give us plenty of room to install the cross members. Now the front cross member takes up the most room and we'll go ahead and install it first. Our front cross member is the one with the reinforcement on the front of it. So we'll go ahead and line up the notch and then go ahead and set it into place. Now in this case, we had a really tight fit, so we had to persuade it into place. Once we got it inside, we'll go ahead and push it to the other side and let it rest on the other frame rail. And then we'll get it underneath and push it to the front as far as possible. Next, we'll go ahead and do the same thing with the rear cross member. This one takes up less space and slides in easy, and we'll push it towards the hat channel going towards the back. Now we can go ahead and put our side plates on. First off, we'll go ahead and do a test fit with our rails. We'll go ahead and put the side plates on the cross rails, then we'll see what holes line up. Now the holes that need to be lined up need to be the 5 8 holes. So we'll go ahead and take the side bracket down and go ahead and set it off to the side and then we'll mark our holes. Now we know what holes to work with. So we'll install our 5 8 hardware. We'll install a 5 8 by 2.5 inch long bolt and a 3 inch long block. To install it, we'll go ahead and use a bolt leader that's provided with the kit. On the forward hole, we'll go ahead and install the bolt leader into the hole and then work it out with a larger oval hole. We'll then install our block. Then we'll thread on our bolt and then we'll push it into the frame head first and then pull through the hole. We're done with one, we'll go to the hole towards the back of the truck and repeat the same process. Now our forward bolt will get an extra block that goes between the frame and a side bracket. We'll leave our bolt leaders on and then go ahead and reinstall our, our bracket. We'll put it on our cross rails and then we'll go ahead and work the bolts through. Then we'll go ahead and put the bracket into place and install the hardware on the outside. We'll loosely install 5 8 Conco tooth washer and nut. And when we install the Conco tooth washer, you want to make sure the teeth always face towards the hitch. For now, we just need this hardware finger tight. We're done for passenger side. We'll go ahead and repeat the same thing over on our driver's side. All right, at this point, we're going to go ahead and snug down our bolts going to our frame bracket to our frame. Just enough to hold them in place. 
And also we're going to do the same thing for the bolts that go from the cross members to the frame brackets. Now we're going to snug those down. Okay, with our cross rails in position, it's a good idea to make sure the frame brackets are even on each side. Okay, with our cross members in position, we'll go ahead and drill out two holes. First off, we'll go ahead and mark our holes to drill. On the rear cross member, there's an oval slot, and we need to go to the outside edge of the slot. Now in this case, the hole we need to drill is on the angle of a corrugation. So, we'll go ahead and use our 5 8 drill bit to make a mark best as we can. We'll start off vertical and work our way diagonal to try to get as center as possible. Once we have a mark made, we'll go back at it with a quarter inch drill bit. This will be our pilot hole. Okay, we'll do this on both oval slots on the rear cross member. And when we're done, we'll have two quarter inch holes on the top of our bed. Okay, with our pilot holes drilled out, we'll go ahead and get into the bed, then lay out our template that comes with the instructions. We'll take the template and lay it over the existing holes that we drilled out. We'll center them out as best as we can. We found out in this case that the holes were a little bit off center, but we can fix that later on. When it comes time to install the hardware, we'll save those bolts for last and use the hitch as a template to make our adjustment in the holes. After we have our template taped down and centered over our holes, then we'll go ahead and use it to mark our holes. To do this, we'll be using a punch and basically we'll just go around the cutout first and make our marks with the punch. And then we'll go through the holes across the top for the hardware and the U-bolts. We'll remove our template and then we'll go ahead and mark our holes with a marker to help find them. Then we'll go ahead and drill out our pilot holes. In this case, we're using a quarter inch drill bit, making our holes first. Then basically we're gonna use our marker to connect the dots. And that'll be our cutout. At this point, it's a good idea to double check our cutout underneath to make sure there's nothing on, in the way that could be hit by a blade. So we'll enlarge one of the holes so we can get our blade started and we'll just basically work our way around our pattern. Okay, once we've made your initial cut, we'll go ahead and put the hitch in. Then we'll adjust as needed to match up to the holes. Chances are we'll have to trim it out just a little bit more to make sure it fits flat on the bed. And then we'll also drill our other holes to 5 eighths. Starting on the crossbar going towards the cab, we'll go ahead and install our new carriage bolt. We'll use an alignment tool. This could be also be a very large screwdriver to help pull everything in position so we can install our hardware. One in each corner will get the carriage bolt. Now there's also a block we need to install between the bed and the hitch. Now the instructions say to go ahead and install these blocks underneath the edge of the hitch on the inside of the bed. However, we found we have a lot more room and get a little more grip if we did it on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and slip them on the bottom and then install the rest of our hardware, which will be a lock washer and a nut. All right, we'll do this on both sides and then just draw everything down just to take up the slack. All right, now we'll go back on top of the bed and continue on with the other two holes in the back. Okay, now our holes are a little bit off, so what we need to do is go ahead and drill a couple more pilot holes. Once our pilot holes finished, we'll go back out with a 5 8 drill bit and our hitch will be our template to drill through. It's a good idea to start off at an angle first since we're going right into the middle of a corrugation. Okay, and once again, we'll go ahead and install our 5 8 carriage bolts from the top down. We'll install our blocks underneath and then our lock washers and nuts. We'll go ahead and snug those up as well. At this time, we can also drop in our U-bolts. 
We'll go ahead and clean up the holes as necessary to 5 8 drill bit and then install our U-bolts. At the same time while we're underneath the truck, we'll go ahead and install the flat washer, the spring, another flat washer, and a lock nut. And then we'll go ahead and just snug up our bolts and make sure everything's sitting the way we want it. At this point, it'd be a good idea to do a final inspection on the hitch and make sure the hitch is sitting square in the bed. And then we'll go ahead and tighten down our bolts for good. And then we'll torque the bolts down as specified in the instructions. All right, with all our bolts tightened and torqued down, we're finished with our install of the hitch. At this point, we can go ahead and reinstall the exhaust, as well as the heat shield, and the spare tire, and the tires and wheels for back axle. All right, we'll go ahead and show you how it works. It's pretty simple. Just pull up on the ring and pull it off to the side, or a passenger side of a truck, and it props the ball up. Then you can grab the ball, pull it vertical, and then put the cap back down. And that's it. To store the ball, just reverse the process. Pull up on the ring one more time, push the ball towards the cover, and then push the cover back down. And with that, they'll finish it for our install, part number 8339-4456. On our 2014 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 Crew Cab.